Don't look now, but Network Attached Storage, or NAS, is replacing cloud storage. And it's about time. Let's talk about that. Welcome to the Cloud Commuting Insider. My name's Dave, let's get going. So Network Attached Storage or NAS is a small dedicated file server that sits on your home or office network and lets multiple devices store, share, and backup data to a central box that you physically own. So instead of paying indefinitely for remote space on iCloud, Google Drive, OneDrive, or AWS, more households and small businesses are turning to NAS or NAS as their primary hub for photos, videos, documents, and backups. And what made me think of this, I'm going through, you know, kind of a, a optimization myself. I, I own or subscribe to the majority of public cloud storage out there, AWS and iCloud and, uh, and uh, uh, Dropbox and Google Drive and OneDrive. I, I, I subscribe to them all and it's running into about, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. And the reason why is because when I do my business, uh, you know, and run my business, it's sharing videos and other large files where I need to have space that I can put these things that I can share with my clients. And in many cases, they can't use a particular type of storage. So in other words, while one of my clients can't use OneDrive, another one of my clients can't use Google. Uh, and so I have to mix and match a variety of different storage systems that are out there. And one of the things that came to me, and I said, well, if I own the storage, and basically it was something that sat, you know, in my own little micro data center that sits in my house, would I get off better financially? And the answer is definitely yes, and I'll tell you why. So the surge represents a sustained high teens compound annual growth rate around 14 to 18 KGAR, fueled by exploding volumes of photos, videos, backups, and other unstructured data that people want to store someplace and trying to find the best value to make that happen. So looking ahead, the analysts forecast that the NAS market will reach roughly 80 to $90 billion by 2030, effectively doubling again from its mid-2020 levels. And so... You know, I'm seeing this as well, and I think the affordability of these NAS-based devices is, it's, it's, is what's driving this. Obviously, network-connected storage, you know, that we bought for data centers uh, was many millions of dollars, you know, a few years ago. And while we're not getting to that level of scale for things that we own in our home, that technology has trickled down into the home market where we're able to buy these devices from 500, 600 bucks, and they're perfectly capable and they're able to replace the cloud storage subscriptions that we currently have. So a typical mid-range consumer or small business NAS appliance with drives included averages about $500 to $600, as I mentioned just a minute ago, up front. And this provides you with several terabytes of private storage that can serve multiple users and devices. In other words, you have a small business, you know, 10, 15 people, you know, this kind of makes sense. If people are going to do massive amounts of storage, storing their invoices, images, you know, documents, all these sorts of things are always going to be shareable systems. Your ability to move off of a public cloud provider that's going to charge you a subscription fee, and it's typically going to go up month to month into something that you own, and therefore you have a flat cost, in this case, a flat cost of something that's less than $1,000, that's going to pay for itself pretty quick. So what are the subscriptions charge versus uh, the value we're seeing with the uh, NAS devices? For personal users, they paid for iCloud storage averages roughly from uh, 3 to $5 per month. Uh, in many markets, depending on how much space people need uh, for their photos and devices. Uh, Google Drive can be about three to five dollars per month as well, putting you know them in a very similar cost base, you know cost uh, uh, category as uh, iCloud. And Microsoft's OneDrive typically costs around six to seven dollars per month when bundled with personal Microsoft 365 subscription, which is the one I have. So I guess if you, subscribe to Microsoft 365, you get a certain amount of OneDrive storage that comes with it. And what I'm talking about there, those are typically going to be very small amounts of storage. And that's not realistic for how people are using these storage these days. You know, obviously having two YouTube channels and, you know, doing a lot of multimedia stuff. Uh, I have the need to store lots of videos. I don't know if you looked at 4K videos lately, but they're very big. And so, the smaller range grows very quickly into the larger range. And what happened to me over the last, you know, several years, and I've been, you know, I think a, uh, a Dropbox subscriber for the last 10 years, 
is every time I ran out of space on Dropbox or OneDrive or you know anything that's out there, I just went ahead and paid for the description uh, fee to upgrade it. Same with Google Drive, things like that. And now I have you know a couple of terabytes here, a couple of terabytes there, and a couple of terabytes uh, here which is running into some significant money. So they're not just charging me six to seven bucks for that. That's going to be 50, you know, to a hundred dollars, uh, all in, in terms of subscription costs. And people say that's a pretty good deal for remote storage that you don't have to manage, but it gets expensive quickly when you look at how these things are going to affect your budget over many, many years. And I think that's what, that's what people are not considering. And I think they need to consider that. So for my purposes and my modeling for this, just to see how it compared with the public cloud providers versus the NAS devices, you know, I looked at five terabytes uh, over a five year period of time, which I think is going to be reasonable for me. And while I'm a power user in terms of storing lots of videos and photos and things like that and documents, that kind of stuff, I don't think it's unheard of for personal storage needs to get up around that space fairly quickly for even just small families because we're storing everything. Data is becoming very pervasive. So if I buy a NAS device to deal or to provide me with my storage needs for the next five years, five terabytes, and in the same ballpark as some of the cloud subscriptions that are out there, in, in other words, what they're going to charge me for the same amount of storage, what are going to be the cost differences? And I think that is a, a very fair way to look at this. So in looking at the cost comparison of the NAS drive versus some of the other storage providers over a five-year period of time, when you're modeling for five terabytes, uh, everybody was way more expensive, as you can see with the table that I'm putting up now, uh, with the exception of OneDrive. And I was surprised the fact that OneDrive is able to provide a significant amount of storage for $10 a month. And it's going to be equal to that of the NAS drive, which surprised me. But the other cloud providers are going to be way out of range, specifically iCloud, which many people use by default uh, because they're in the Apple ecosystem. That's going to be about $2,000 a month. Google, about $1,500 a month. I noticed they're getting expensive. And then AWS S3, um, which you can use as personal storage as well, is going to be about $7,000. As you can see, there's significant differences in owning your storage system versus renting it. Uh, now, obviously, there's other costs involved with owning your system. You're going to have to maintain it. Uh, so I'm assuming you're going to have some basic technical skills to do that. Upgrade the operating system. It's basically a computer. It's going to run an operating system. You're going to have to update that from time to time. And so if you're not technically savvy, you know, this may not be an option for you. But if you are, this may provide you, may, may provide you with significant benefits in terms of costs over, you know, some of the cloud options that are out there. Now, the other thing that factors into this as well is security of ownership and having physical control of your data. Many people are a little skittish about putting all of their information, all the private data, images, videos, things like that, up on a cloud provider. And while I haven't heard of any instances where that, in, where that data has been compromised, uh, there is going to be a risk that it is going to be compromised. Also, outages. Uh, in other words, we saw... You know, over the last few months, AWS had an outage, Microsoft had an outage, Cloudflare had an outage, stopped the internet from working, and many people who owned their own storage systems, you know, kept on moving. In other words, they, they weren't interrupted um, because they weren't dependent on a cloud provider. That lack of dependency uh, really means a lot to certain businesses. Not everybody. Everybody's going to have a, you know, different way of thinking about that. But if you're freaked out about somebody else owning your data and having your control of your data because you're renting a storage system versus owning it, this is obviously going to be a better option for you. Well, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also, check out my InfraWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100-plus LinkedIn learning courses, and, of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest books, Unlocking the Power of Cloud and An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, stay very, very safe. The magical YouTube algorithm thinks this is another one of my videos that you should watch now.